This video brought to you by our Patreons. Please consider supporting this channel and joining our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash NovaWing24. Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 27th of September 2020 for another bumper edition of content, so let's jump straight into it shall we, with the release from developer Sierra Sim Simulations, with their release of their latest airport in Latin America of Jose Joaquin de Almido International Airport. Uh, now, this Ecuadorian airport apparently has the most passenger movements in Ecuador, and I uh, can't really, I don't really, I'll be honest, I don't really have, Sierra Sim, I love, the, the, your content looks really good, but you give us, <laughs> you give those of us who do new shows nothing to work with here. Anyway, so in terms of renditions of this airport, so this is an uh, up-to-date rendition of the airport as it appears in 2020, including um, all airport buildings rendered in high-definition uh, models with full use of PBR throughout, full set of custom assets asphalt textures throughout the airport, a variety of custom airport objects, uh, a, variety, a custom set of realistic night lighting provided throughout, as well as providing uh, the civilian and military sides of this uh, dual-use airfield, which is always very important for realism as well. Not only does it include the airport itself, it also includes a large number of points of interest uh, for visual reference throughout the city of, uh, oh, I'm totally going to get this wrong, Guayaquil, uh, Guayaquil, I'm assuming that's what it is. Uh, so so various, various points of interest in the city of Guayaquil, as well as uh, custom airport buildings surrounds point of interest as well. So a highly detailed rendition coming to your sim, coming in for a price of 14 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now from Sierra Sims website. Continuing on with scenery releases this week, the guys over at Vertical Sim saw their latest release this week with their rendition of Norfolk International Airport. Uh, now, this is a custom build, a, a ground up build because Vertical Sim have previously released this airport for X Plane 11. However, this is an, a uh, ground up rebuild. So, this is not a, just a straight port over, this is a custom build. Now, this includes a up to date layout of the airport as it appears in 2020, full support for P full PBR texturing support support throughout uh, all, all major airport buildings. Full custom set of HDR night lighting uh, is included throughout the airport as well. Has also include a variety of handcrafted objects and custom details done off actual in-person res uh, research and use. Full set of ground clutter supporting all custom or variety of different custom things that you would see at that particular airport. And as I said before, a full support of HD buildings with PBA, PBR textures included as well. They've also included um, updated photoreal and updated airport layouts, uh, sorry, updated uh, airport surrounds uh, for to making sure you got the uh, correct approaches, particularly to the uh, water near the end of the approach of uh, runway 23 as well as providing a variety of set of points of interest in the nearby area as well to make it uh, better for visual reference for vfr pilots and um, this is available for 12 us dollars or your original equivalent available now from vertical sims directly Continuing on with more releases this week's from F Sim Studios. It's all their rendition of Kel Kelowna International Airport. I am absolutely certain I have botched that again, but this is a Canadian airport, uh, just in, uh, in British Columbia. And it's a single uh, runway airport. Uh, there are always a variety of uh, scheduled uh, regional services throughout uh, throughout Canada and into the US. Uh, now this is a highly detailed rend rendition of the airport. Now it's um, again, it's not a port over. Uh, uh, this is a ground up rebuild uh, because uh, previously F Sim Studios have released this for other Sims. Um, so uh, yeah, this is a ground up rebuild. This isn't just a straight port over. So it includes, as I said, a highly detailed rep representation of it, updated to how it appears during uh, twenty twenty. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, including a variety of uh, static aircraft, including <laughs> grounded 737 MAX 8s. So, for... Oh. Oi, topical. Anyway, moving on. Uh, as well as that, it's all materials are done with full set of uh, support, full PBR texturing throughout, and a custom ortho photo for the airport and surrounding areas, a variety of custom points of interest for the surrounding area for to customize the approach, along with the city of Kelowano in, uh, uh, 
modelled in uh, with a variety of its points of interest, including hospital, the hospital, major shopping malls, and major hotels, all included in this sim as well. So you can pick this one up for eighteen US dollars or your regional equivalent. Available now from F Sim Studios. Oh, and there is a discount uh, for those of you who may already own this airport for uh, other sims. Uh, all of those. You, if you do previously own it, then you will have received a discount code available now from FSIM Studios. Continuing on with another airport release, the guys of the FS Dream Team have released their latest uh, product for the new simulator, uh, with their release of Key West International Airport in Florida. Uh, now, this one is again a ground-up rebuild. It is not a uh, port over, so this is uh, this includes a variety of updates, including up to up to date layout as appears in 2020, uh, customized and improved uh, 3D buildings, and a full use of PBR materials throughout the entire scenery as well. Also includes a full dynamic uh, lighting, a dynamic range of set of lighting for night lighting and day lighting as well. A variety of interiors have been simulated using the parallax window math uh, mapping method, which pioneered by this new simulator, which is, I've seen that commented a few times on my channel here where people are sort of saying that they're complaining of, you know, people, you know, with developers rendering the insides of buildings and it's going to cost frames and polys and stuff like that, which to a degree, I do kind of agree with. However, this is, this parallax window mapping is actually a really great compromise um, to be able to sort of balance the desire for immersion by being by being able to see inside uh, terminals with then not sacrificing polys and frame, frame counts and stuff like that. So I think this is a really good piece of tech that Microsoft has pioneered and great to see developers picking up and using it as well. It also includes a variety of animated uh, human representations throughout the airport as well. And uh, for, as I said, full support for PPR as well. Available now direct from FS Dream Team for $11 or 11 US dollars or your original equivalent. Available now from FS Dream Team. Continuing on with airport releases this week, the guys over at Orbix saw a release of a couple of airports this week. The first one being Bryce Canyon Airport. Uh, so this one is a dramatic canyon approach in southern Utah. They're very, very close to uh, Bryce Canyon National Park, and which is part of Monument Valley and the northern rim of the Grand Canyon, just being a nearby as well. Now, this rendition uh, is a ground up again, a ground up rebuild of one previously released for other sims, including a high handcrafted PBR 4K textures throughout, including ultra-high-definition modeling of all airport buildings. Uh, includes a sloped runway and a custom ground polys as well to give you that undulated sense of terrain and the fact that it is a very uh, challenging airport and challenging approach as well. Dynamic, uh, dynamic lighting throughout uh, all airport buildings modeled and a variety of customer vegetation and customer uh, terrain mapping as well to give you an incredibly immersive experience and gr a great springboard for being able to explore a vast range of incredibly beautiful locations uh, as included with a Microsoft Flight Simulator. You can pick this one up for 13 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Orbix Direct. In another airport release from Orbix this week saw their release of uh, Alessand Vigra Airport uh, for, in Norway this week. Uh, so this one previously released for the uh, ESP sim, uh, sorry, for uh, prepare the 64-bit ESP sims uh, earlier this year. So this one includes, again, a ground-up build customized for the new simulator with a high-definition uh High definition support and accurate layout of the airport as it currently appears, including all airport buildings in full PBR support, uh, 15 centimeter per pixel custom aerial ground imagery for the area surrounding area as well, uh, with a with a uh, full model of the sloped runway, a variety of custom POIs and landmarks also included uh, in the surrounding area as well. So plenty here for the visual uh, visual approach flyer as well, and a variety of custom unique content coming through for this one. Um, I must say it looks really the most impressive this looks most impressive during either the winter winter conditions or with um sort of stormy type conditions this one it looks really really cool from the screenshots so this one's available direct from orbix direct coming in at uh, 16 us dollars all the original equivalent available now from orbix direct Next up, we saw the release this week from Gaia Simulations of their rendition of Berlin Tegel uh, International Airport. This one, so uh, a very, very close to so airport servicing uh, Berlin and is the uh, very much an urban hub of providing both international and domestic flights throughout Germany and throughout Europe. Uh, previously uh, home to Air Berlin before it folded and went bust during the current world situation that we all find ourselves in. Uh, however, it's still going to be a home, very important airport for a variety of airports going uh, of 
of airlines moving forward. Now, this rendition of the airport includes a high definition textures, sorry, a high definition modeling of all airport buildings up to date as it appears in 2020, uh, including all textures being done in full PBR support as well, uh, undulating runway included, and beautiful custom high definition materials used throughout. And now, this airport is the uh, sort of is an additional uh, sort of airport. It's another airport from Gaia Simulations. Uh, so this one's coming in at 20 US dollars to pick this one up directly. Um, alternatively, you can actually, if you haven't already picked up their rendition of uh, uh, Vienna, you can actually pick it up, the two of them together as a bundle price as well and save yourself around about 15% uh, if you do want to pick this one up together. Um, otherwise, this one's available direct from Orbix Direct, available now. Continuing on with more scenery releases for Microsoft Flight Simulator this week, the guys over at Northern Sky Studio uh, saw the release this week of their rendition of Ketchikan International Airport in Alaska. Um, so this is, re sorry, <laughs> this is a really, really interesting airport for me. I remember flying in and out of here um, in Microsoft Flight, and it's a it's got a really picturesque, really beautiful approach. Um, it's a general, so it's a GA so, and sort of regional airport, this one. However, there's no road access. Like, there, there is actually no road access to the airport. You have to get a ferry to the airport from the, from the city, from the town. So it makes getting there kind of cool, kind of interesting. One of the places that IRL, I would really, really want to go fly out of. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so this high detailed rendition includes all airport buildings uh, and its major, major buildings in the township as well. The custom terrain mesh, uh, full high detailed renditions of the surrounding area as well, as I said before. Uh, all materials fully done in PBR materials as well, with high resolution building textures and the use of native models and native models for the sim as well. Uh, previously, Northern Sky had released this for, I believe, the ESP sims. Um, but yeah, as I said, again, like a lot of developers, it's really good to see that developers are not just trying to do like hand jamming um, ports over. They're actually choosing to take the time, do the right thing, and actually pull and actually rebuild content from the ground up which is and re-export out the correct way which is really really good to see uh, now this product in this release is coming in available now for 20 us dollars or your original equivalent available now from sim markets Continuing on with more releases, the guys over at DC, DC Scenery Design, not to be confused with the uh, aircraft developer of the similar name, uh, saw the release this week of uh, their uh, rendition of Patrocino Airport in Brazil for the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, so not a lot to say about this airport, and I've got a couple of questions about it. Like the 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 tarmac, the, the layout of the airport and the airport buildings look really, really good. Um, so it looks like high definition textures, looks like PBR materials used throughout, um, updated with the you know, correct apron layout as appears in 2020, which is good. However, the photo reel that they're putting it over looks not the best. Um, and that looks a bit eh. Um, as I said, the actual airport layout itself looks good. Looks good. These textures and stuff like that—they look, look like they've done really, really well. Um, but yeah, it's just—it's it, just—it's just looking at the ground texture just throws it off just that little bit. So, eh, is it enough to put you off? I don't know. The price point's not bad. Uh, eight bucks for this one if you want to pick this one up. Available now from Sim Market. Continue on with another release again for this one, uh, which is from Russian Digital Simulations, which I'm pretty sure is. a um, yeah, no, they're not, they're not, they, they're, they haven't heard from them much for a while. They've been around for a while, but I haven't heard them a lot. Anyway, um, I have a couple, straight up, I'm going to say, I've got a couple of concerns for this one, um, this release straight up. So first of all, the, the, the highlights. So, uh, this is the, um, Svevka Airfield, uh, so it's called Svevka Airfield V1 is what they're calling it. Now I have some concerns straight away from, with that. So this is a um, sort of a, a GA airfield uh, used for sort of, you know, sort of you know, GA flights and, and uh, flight training. Um, just near Moscow, uh, so it was about 100 k's out of Moscow, or sort of, um, yeah, but I think it's 70 odd 100 k's out of Moscow. Um, now, <sighs> the airport itself includes a high data recognition of it, uh, fully custom modeled airport, airport layout, layout as appears in 2020, um, two centimeter per pixel ground poly um, and uh, photo reel, which is incredibly detailed, that's awesome. Um, full PBR materials used to it out, that's great. What I have a problem with um, is the final line of their feature description, so, which is support and upgrade update product to version two free during one year. So 
I have a problem with that straight up. So this is 10 US dollars and they're already saying, basically, this is already going to be out of date. They already have a V2 coming. And if you basically you're saying, by the way, guys, if we happen to delay the release of our V2 for more than 365 days, then sorry, you're not, you're going to have to buy it again. Um, even though they've already confirmed they're releasing an, an update for that. I have a huge, massive problem with that. That is pure money making. When you, To their credit, at least they're being honest about it. They're actually honestly telling them they're going to rip us off in the future. Um, so yeah, I'll credit them that. They're going to do that. But to literally say at the get-go, we are going to update this to a better version in about a year's time. But if it happens to be more than a year from when you buy it, too bad. Like, I am totally not okay with that in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah. Anyway, if you wanted to pick this one up, 10 bucks for that reason alone, I wouldn't recommend it. Anyway, available now from SimMarket. In another release for Microsoft Flight Simulator this week, the guys from Tabaret release another in there. Well, it's very similar to Vancouver Harbor, this one. So this is um, Boston Harbors for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this is another interesting release. So it, and I've got a lot of mixed feelings about this. I was mixed about when I when I reported on Vancouver Harbors a few weeks ago, and I'm even more mixed about this one. I, I'm bringing it to you guys because I want to make you guys aware of it. So, um, so Boston is one of the cities that's included in the sim as being one of the photogrammetry cities where they use the technology to take high definition um, imagery, both aerial and ground imagery from the city and then composite all together, you know, throw it into an AI, composite all together to actually get proper true to life photo real buildings as well. Um, and it can have some rather interesting outputs. Like it looks amazing, but also can look really weird in some places. It, it's, it's what happens. Now, this is the second one of Tabaret's redos or, you know, updates to a photogrammetry city. Um, and their tagline is that, you know, it's a complete redesign of Boston Harbors area according to the geographic position of objects and shorelines, bringing out the best of MSFS in build photogrammetry around coastlines by fixing layers and some additional objects. Okay, so I'm looking at the images for this and I'm trying to honestly figure out is this before or after the uh, add-on is put in? because I'm looking at this and going, this looks exactly the same. Um, I mean, it says that they've put in custom 3D objects to further enhance the simulation experience, and yet I'm still looking at ships that are morphed into the ground and into the water, or parts of docks that have been water masked over by the AI that were during the build of the photogrammetry. So I'm, I'm not convinced that this add-on I, I, I'm not convinced about this add-on. I'm really not. And I'm looking at it going, if, I, if, if, if I'm going to pay money to update something that's already in the sim, then I expect it to be better quality of what's already in the sim. And quite frankly, this doesn't look that. As I said, I do not know. I'm going to caveat this by saying, I do not have this product. I have not bought it. I have not got a copy of it. I have not looked at it. I am looking at the publicity shots. And for me, the publicity shots make it look exactly like it is out of the box. So... I'm just looking at that and going, mm. yeah. So buy beware, uh, look long and hard about it, look at the screenshots that they provide and look at your in-sim experience before you pick it up. If you want to pick this one up, you're looking at about 15 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now at Sim Market. Moving out of the Microsoft Flight Simulator world, the sim of the hour, and moving into the world of the ESP sims, I uh, saw the release from one of my favorite developers, Golden Age Simulations, uh, with their release of their rendition of the Aeronaka LC uh, this week for the full gamut of all of the ESP sims, including F6, F6 Sim Edition, and prepared in all its glory in versions 1 through 5 inclusive. Now, the Aeronaka Aeron, Aeronaka LL was a 1930s uh, uh, cabin um, uh, cabin monoplane designed and built by us in uh, very small numbers by Aeronaka Aircraft. Um, and it's got a very interesting, as a cantilever um, 
fixed undercarriage with spats design um, in its primary form, but it did also have a float variant as well. And this one looks, looks absolutely amazing. Now this is a highly detailed uh, 3D model, both internally and externally with 4K textures uh, throughout and both externally and internally as well with full support for PBR for the 64-bit uh, versions of the SIM. Includes a fully animated VC cockpit uh, with a custom sound package, a full set of high facility sound files, both internally and externally, and a full set of precision flight dynamics and a fully set of a full set of custom animations, including the 90 horsepower Warner Scarab radial engine. I just love the weird and wonderful aircraft the Golden Age going through and produce. I always love them. I really do. So great to see these guys still developing some great content. Hopefully we will see them bring their amazing content over to the new sim at some point in the future. I truly hope so. Uh, this aircraft is available for 21 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Sim Market. Continuing on with more releases this week for the ESP Sims. I saw the release this week from Technobrain of their latest airport of Kobe International Airport, which is a Japanese airport uh, located off the coast of Kobe. One of the three major cities in the Kansai region. Um, so this is a highly detailed rendition of the airport, uh, including a custom layout as the airport during appears in 2020, uh, with full custom static airport ve vehicles, all airport buildings modeled, and with a variety set of dynamic lighting included throughout for V4 and above users as well. Fully designed to work with all of the ESP sims though, from FSX all the way through to prepared V5 and inclusive, uh, and a variety of custom layer marks included as well, as well as not only just the, all of the airport buildings detailed, but also some of the custom uh, airports in the surrounding area as well. And you pick this one up for a uh, normally normally priced at forty one US dollars. Currently on a launch launch discount of thirty US dollars or your original equivalent. Available now from Sim Market. In another release for the ESP Sim World, France VFR released their latest piece of photo reel coverage of the country of France uh, by re releasing their rendition of the Poutou Chantres region uh, with giving incredibly high detailed aerial images of up to one meter per pixel, uh, including and uh, with high definition mesh, a terrain mesh of four meters uh, as well, looking absolutely incredible. This one, um, the ground textures do vary from everything from eighty centimeters to one point two meter per pixel uh, for or some uh, parts of the area as well, uh, with as I said, with the LOD 13 custom mesh as well. It includes a variety of obstacles and VFR landmarks throughout the entire area, including all major antennas, towers, water towers, wind turbines, and various tall buildings included as well. Also includes a basic overlay, uh, update of many of the airfields in the same area as well, and hundreds of various custom points of interest, including churches, power plants, silos, castles, industrial tanks, bridges, tolls, cranes, boats, and other things as well. Looking absolutely amazing as always from the team over at France VFR. You can pick this one up direct from them or from Sim Market for about 35 US dollars or your regional equivalent available now. Moving out of the ESP world and moving into the world for X-Plane this week for a release this week. I uh, saw so the release this week from uh, DC Scenery Design. Again, with another release from them of Bullock County Airport in Georgia. Now, again, uh, not a lot of information about this one. Uh, so this is just uh, looks like just a private strip, and it's just a GA strip. This one, this including a high detail rendition of the airport as it appears in 2020, including full uh, custom 3D models and high definition models of all airport buildings. Includes full use of PBR textures throughout all major airport buildings and ground textures as well. High quality ortho uh, photo reel base imagery used throughout the airport and surrounding area and designed to be fully compatible with a variety of custom terrain add-ons as well. Now you can pick this one up for 12 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from xplane.org. Moving out of X-Plane 11 and moving into the world of DCS this week. So a couple of this release, well, actually, sorry, no. They actually were released last a couple of weeks ago, but I missed them. So sorry to the DCS community, uh, but uh, here we are. They're, I'm reporting on them now. So sorry I'm a little late to the party, but here we go. Uh, so we recently saw two new campaigns released for Digital Combat Simulator uh, and various aircraft for that one. The first one being um, actually a really, really important one, actually, being the release of the Raven 1 campaign by 
by Baltic Dragon, featuring, uh, I'm going to give a huge plug to him, uh, none other than our good friend of our channel, uh, Bill Geode, as being a character of one of the voice actors in this uh, product. Now, this particular campaign is a campaign for the FA18C Hornet uh, in the sim, which is of course uh, very, which is of course very much required for the, doing this one. Now, this includes a, uh, for a 15 uh, fully voiced immersive, fully voiced over immersive missions, uh, all based on the book of the same name as well for this one, and done and and constructed with consult in consultation with a the author of the original book, Kevin Miller, as well as a uh, Vincent Jello Aleo, which is the host of the Fighter Pilot uh, podcast, with a variety of other inputs from Smees as well. As I said, this includes 15 story-driven missions uh, with a huge number of recorded lines performed by over 50 voice actors and all including all main characters from the Raven 1 novel as well. Includes a variety of highly detailed custom realistic maps and mission information as well with all major mission types including CAP, CAS, SEED and ground and surface strikes and Alert 7 and Alert 30 launches as well. So looking absolutely amazing with this one. Uh, if you do want to uh, be part of this and to enjoy this uh, mission pack, you will need to have the, obviously the F-18C Hornet for DCS. You'll also need the Persian Gulf and Super Carrier add-ons as well. And you can pick this one up for 14 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from DCS World. In the other campaign released recently this week saw the release of the Crew Part 1 campaign by Stone Sky for the DCS MI8. Uh, now, this one is uh, taking over the command seat. He has you taking over the command seat as uh, Dmitry Tarasov, a young pilot climbing the ladder with a variety of professional tasks to, go, to take part of. Um, this is really interesting as well because it's not necessarily about combat, this one. This is actually necessarily more about like the, the some of the non-combat stuff as well, including, you know, things like, you know, how to, how you transport passengers, navigating in severe, you know, severe weather or in, you know, disadvantaged weather. Um, there are some combat missions in this one, but it's just as much about the non-combat option, including sling loads as well, and a lot of stuff going on through here as well. Now, this one includes uh, 14 story missions with over 163, page, 163 pages of detailed briefings and kneeboards uh, and over 1,600 voice triggers as well. So this is looking absolutely amazing, coming in at 13 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from DCS Store. Moving out of flight simulation and moving into the world of the permanent way. It was a release this week for Train Simulator 20. I just, seriously, this, can they just not? Change the re evergreen every year with a new year, please. Anyway, train scene later 2021. Uh, so there is this week for the of the Merchant Navy Class 35028 Clan Line Steam Locomotive as part of the pro range of um trains for this simulator. Uh, so this is an iconic uh, train, which is uh, dates back, designed back, dates back to the 1940s and designed by famed train designer Oliver Bullide, uh, as you can see, and was actually uh, come through and would do a lot of, uh, would do a lot of hauling throughout um, the United Kingdom and as well as, and also in big limited service in the United States as well. Um, so it come through, as uh, apparently it had a nickname attributed calling the Spam Can, thanks to its air smoothing case that adjoined the sides of the locomotives, which is always kind of funny and interesting way of looking at it. But anyway, uh, so the, this uh, train would actually go through um, and serve throughout the 1940s, and then the 1950s would actually be updated and overhauled and updated to include a variety of uh, updates of the time. It would eventually be withdrawn during the during the late 1960s, with the last one soldiering on and serving into 1967. One of these trains eventually did uh, sur survive into posterity and is still survived today and is actually maintained uh, by the Merchant Navy Locomotive Preservation Society, which is, is of this, this is a fully licensed recreation of the single preserved example left in existence. Uh, so this as uh, this highly detailed rendition of the uh, surviving uh, train it also includes a uh, 6,000 gallon tender with air compressor along with the full train itself, including a full set of authentic simulations including uh, vacuum brake leaks, reverses, sanders, prototypical injections and multiple brake modes and with a uh, custom automatic fireman included as well and a variety of custom features as well. Also includes uh, six career scenarios um, that if you do want to make most use of them you will also need the southwestern line main line, Southampton to Bournemouth route, and the Welsh Marches Newport to Shrewsbury route as well, if you do want to make use of those. And if you want to add this to your collection, you're looking at paying 20 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Steam. 
And finally, rounding out the Nova app this week, saw the latest addition to the stable of uh, sports sims this week, saw the release this week of Tennis World Tour 2. Honestly, I didn't even know there was a Tennis World Tour 1. But there you go. Apparently there is. So there you go. So this and... Can I just, just a thing, I don't know if anybody watches this from the developers, but hey, Big Ant Studios and Nacon, if you're watching, can you give a little bit more to go on in your description of the game, by the way, because it's literally 10 lines long, and it's rubbish. So, literally, this is the entire description of this game. Play as the world's top players, or create your own player to try and dominate the world rankings. Faster paced, with more animations and more realism, experiencing the true sensations of tennis in singles or doubles games, and challenge your friends locally or online. That's kind of it. Like, it literally says, more animations, more strokes. Uh, master the timing of your, strokes, of your strokes with new serve mechanics. Okay. What about them? What's improved? I have no idea. Um, apparently, in career mode, you manage your season and your staff and your equipment and your sponsors. Okay? How? Like, throw me a bone here, guys. Anyway. So, uh, this one comes out in a couple of different editions. Uh, you've got the base edition. Uh, then you also have the ace edition, which includes the annual pass to include all your DS DLC uh, into the future. Otherwise, there was also another piece of day one DLC, uh, which is the Legends pack, um, which uh, includes uh, Marat Safin and Gustavo Curtin. Um, and it's currently on a launch freebie. So, if you do just pick this game up, you can get that for free straight away. Otherwise, it will revert to 10 bucks um, at the end of October. October. Otherwise, if you do want to pick this one up for your sim, uh, for your sim, you are looking at forty US dollars for the base edition, re available now on Steam. And with that, folks, that does now round up the Nova app for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, as always, do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search Novoing24. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.